Yo, what's up? We are now outside my home and this is the Tesla Model 3 Performance, a 2021 model with heat pump. And this time I'm going to do a little different test because you know, I always wanted to know how long can you idle a car, an EV, uh, to see how, how long can you idle it before the battery is totally out. I mean, uh, that's like, you know, fossil cars, they can usually idle for days before they run out of juice. In a case where you have to, I don't know, really be stranded somewhere and it's kind of cold like now, then how long can you run the heater? So that's what we're going to find out. I just charged 100 percent and I chose this one, the performance, because it has slightly bigger battery. It has 76 kilowatt hour available energy. So we, we have to unplug soon, very soon. Actually, we should do it now. Yeah, let's do it now. But let me just show you. We start at exactly 18, well, 1845. So, well, or actually, maybe I should start at, uh, yeah, let's start at seven. Okay, we're gonna wait 15 minutes, but there's nothing, since we are plugged in, that the heater just pulls from the plug. So we are not really use, using, using the battery yet, but you can see here that according to Scan My Tesla, we, well, it's supposed to have 80 kilowatt hour nominal full pack. Oh, well, actually, I remember. And uh, the 60, 76 kilowatt hour is to 0%, but this one, this car has also a little bit of extra juice below zero. So we might actually be able to get 80 kilowatt hour. And I want to see, can, can this car survive for three days, 72 hours in winter? So it's minus three degrees. Well, it's actually, it's minus four, but okay, minus four, minus three. Uh, because it's been stationary, but um, it's going to be winter temperatures throughout the whole test. I have live stream here. I have, okay, a small modification I did was that I put this one here on the roof because it will make it nice and warm. But I also measured that it does almost nothing to the consumption anyway. And also as an offset, uh, I will not sleep in the car because I'm just right outside my home. So I will sleep nice and comfy inside my house. And that means that, uh, you know, a, a one human generates about 80 watts of heat. So yes, if I would be in the car, I would generate that extra heat. And since I'm not here, then I think this one kind of yeah, offsets for it. So, you know, it's, it's a very fair test, winter test. We're gonna wait until seven and then we unplug and start the clock. It's seven, unlock charge port. Okay, there you go. Just proof, I just reset, scan my Tesla, uh, we unplug, and now we see. Okay, well, this one should close by itself. There, okay, good, good, good. And here we see, scan my Tesla, the battery is at 27.8 degrees. Not crazy hot, but still a small advantage, maybe, <laughs> maybe one kilowatt hour advantage from the heat here. And here we will see that stationary we will start counting. Now it's 10 watt hour. So we just count how many kilowatt hour we use. And see the car claims we have 80.4 kilowatt hour. Since we are stationary, like here, then it's actually pretty safe to just run the car all the way until it shuts down because I can just plug it in again. But I have to pay attention. If this car runs out, for a night, I have to be here and shoot video for a night. So we will see when the car runs out. So the, the setting is that I have camp mode on, 20 degrees Celsius, auto, and that's it. How much are we spending right now? Yeah, I forgot to mention, look here. When the battery is nice and warm, we're spending only, well, very, very little energy because remember that some of this is to power the screen, the pumps, everything, so the HVAC is sucking almost no power right now. It's just insane how efficient the new Model uh, 3 is. All right, it's been almost four hours now. I've been a little bit in and out of the car. I actually went grocery shopping. We went, uh, I went walking with Dolly and wifey, and I also prepared some food, but let's do a little more checkpoint here. So here is the food. Oh yeah, I love salad. We have olives, we have cucumber, sweet pepper, sun-dried tomatoes, fresh tomatoes, pickled onion, shrimp, just toss in whatever you like. 
healthy food. Oh, so you see, you see me always eating shit food on the road, but that's because there are no healthy options. I would love to have something like this. If you guys remember in the old days when I did Nimmer Task, I would buy salad at uh, Euros Bar in Brokkelandsheia. They would have something similar to this one. But most of the time when I'm at Circle K or Yaf, then it's just burger. But okay, so we are getting close to the four hour mark. And it's actually minus five degrees outside. And right now the car reports as, okay, we have spent three kilowatt hour. We're down to 96%. Right now, it seems that the car is actually pulling one kilowatt. Oh, shit. Uh, it shouldn't... Uh, if you want to make, meet the, the 72 hour mark, we cannot exceed 1.1 kilowatt. So, okay. And also, <clears throat> I have this one here, which is a th thermometer. You see that this one reported as minus. You can barely see the minus sign there, but it's minus four according to this one which is on the ground uh, right outside there on the yeah <clears throat> and then it also reports that's 21 degrees inside the car and we set it to 21 degrees it's nice and warm in here i still have a uh, live stream going on i'm actually going to live stream the whole test <laughs> but now i'm gonna eat oh yeah it is now 11 30 in the morning so that means we've been camping here for 16 and a half hours car is still running it's been snowing all night so you see the hood part which doesn't generate any heat at all snows and then stays there uh, but the window all the window cover shades areas or surfaces is melted even the top here which is insulated so i just wonder how much extra energy the car has to spend by melting all this you see this is what we would have had on the windows. So, um, huh, and you see that interesting. We start seeing icicles here as this, the snow melts, runs down here, the water runs here, and then it freezes again. So we would get lots and lots of icicles by the, te by the end. Holy guacamole. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That is a lot. I guess also the other. Wait, should we check the other side? Yeah. Let's do a little uh, visual inspection here. What the cars look. What the car looks like now. And we can check again. In, oh, hey. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We see icicles on this side also. All right. So um, supposedly the live stream stopped. I haven't been in the car since last night. All right. Uh, the live stream was down. I fired it up again. And uh, if you look here now, you see that. Um, when we add these two numbers together, we still get 79.6 kilowatt hour, just like yesterday. So this number can't be trusted. We can probably trust these two, but by the end of the day or by the end of the test, we will see actually how much we get out of it. But uh, based on these numbers now, uh, I see that uh, it seems like we average 1050 watt. That's power draw. Remember, that's what, not, not, don't mix up kilowatt and kilowatt hour. I'm looking at power draw, which is measuring watts or kilowatts. And based on this one, then we might be able to camp another 50 hours or <laughs> 50. I don't know, we, we, need, we need to try to hit this target of 72 uh, hours. But uh, okay, uh, the good thing here is that uh, because it's snowing, the temperature is not that low. So the car claims minus three, but if you look here, the top one here, it's only minus one degrees. So that's good and also the, this uh, ther thermometer reports the inside temperature to be 23 degrees so it's been nice and warm in here we can as a control test we can yeah this one is nice and warm if it was cold uh, if the heater failed for some reason it would be cold but this car had um, the pt sensor the pressure and temp sensor replaced recently so it shouldn't fail but okay so now we wait it is now one at night. You can see it there. Yeah. So now this is the second night. And what we have to do now is take 29 hours. Yeah, we, we started 29 hours ago since midnight. So now we have to take 29 plus one. So it means 30 minutes. Oh, sorry, 30 hours has passed. And I can show you guys the stats so far that after 30 hours, we have spent 32 kilowatt hour so it means that we are still below 1.1 kilowatt which is the, the the threshold yeah 
So all right, the temperature in the pack is actually 10 degrees. I'm going to call it night now. I had a little uh, Q&A session on the live stream. Lots of interesting questions. Whoa, what the heck happened here? The fan speed suddenly went to four. And I can tell by looking at this one, because if this one is 250 RPM, it means fan speed three, and then 311 RPM is fan speed four. But okay, I'm going to show you a weird feature, or I consider it a bug. When we are in camp mode, it will say here, See if we can see if the camera can focus on it. There, it says tap to dismiss. The bug is that once you once you tap it now, if if there is something there, like a button, you will tap on that button. What it should do is when you tap it once, it should dismiss this one, and then if you have then you have to tap again to actually press that button. I know that here somewhere is where the open lift gate is. Let's try to tap here. Look, <laughs> it opened the lift gate. What? You see, fix this Tesla. <laughs> oh, yeah, so that's kind of clumsy. Yeah, all right, but okay, it's 1 a.m. It's minus two claimed by the car. Ac according to my thermometer, it's minus 0 0.06 only. And the car and this one claims 25 degrees. Nice and warm in here. Yeah. So I guess I call it night now. And I come back tomorrow morning and see how it goes. It is now 11 on the third day, which means that it's been 40 hours since we started camping and Today it's um, what? What day is it? Is it Wednesday? Yeah, it should be Wednesday. What was it again? Yeah, I did. Okay, okay, it's Wednesday. Yeah, we we will end on Thursday according to my calculation. But uh, today it's not too cold. It's actually around zero degrees Celsius. And uh, last night the, the tractor came to uh, clear the snow. So you see, it's been snowing a lot <laughs> these days. And then. But right now it's around zero degrees Celsius. So we have something called Kramsnö. You see, the snow is like this. It's really nice for making uh, snowmen. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, and uh, the car is still full of icicles, but not that much. And also interesting here, you see that the snow we had on the hood has now melted partly. So I don't know how, how it's gonna be tomorrow, but that, that's, yesterday we had a pretty cool front looked like a like a Mach E or a, or I pace front <laughs> yeah uh, uh, and then let me just get, oh the, the brakes need some loving yeah okay I should go for a spin after this test so there's been lots of moisture I, I saw so okay let me show you also the temp sensor is over here I put it there, there so this is the external temp sensor that reports into that one inside the car it is now 10 minutes past two it has been 55 hours now since we started camping and we have reached 20 percent finally and you see right now we cannot use cap what no you see we cannot use camp on any anymore it's grayed out and this display shows you 20 percent well hang on and then this one here shows you 21%. So yeah, we cannot use Campon anymore. And that's it. We are down here. Now we have to use the trick by putting the car in neutral. And that's the last part of the test, really. This is the last stage of the test. I use the, the rise and uh, dumbbell trick. So you put it on the seat. That's the only way to keep it. I'm, I'm also buckled up. We are tricking the system now to believe that there's someone is here. The car is in neutral. I turn on. We have a little bit of light here. It's, it's pretty. We have to run it like this. And then we can lock the car. <laughs> so we have to stay like this until tomorrow morning. So, yeah. Let's see tomorrow morning then. Good morning. It is now almost eight and nine in the morning it means that we are getting close to the 
62 hour mark so hopefully this car can survive for 10 more hours so today is just rainy and wet and let me show you now what happened during the night this is what it looks like I buckle up this one it worked through the night I'm gonna go inside through it. all right this is what it looks like now we are at nine percent I'm just in park right now with the heater on and the power draw is quite high right now maybe because I pull in a little bit of water uh, moisture so uh, you see max discharge power 55 uh, 56 kilowatt I just pressed the brake now stators are pretty cold and this one yeah so the car estimates 11 kilowatt hour left and we have 10 more hours to go so uh, I'm actually not sure what's gonna happen now so now comes the long wait it is now one in the afternoon and okay it's not minus three degrees outside it's two degrees Celsius you can see it here on this temp yeah you see two degrees but right now the car here reports zero percent left interesting because uh, scan my tesla claims that we have 3.65 percent left and in the late hours now the temperature in the pack has uh, gone up a little bit i think this is a um, uh, um it's been programmed like this to avoid uh, the battery to be too cold but uh, we have this little uh, crystal icon now that we hadn't seen before which is interesting because the battery was in fact colder earlier but there was no crystal icon so well it's still running yeah we we are still running it so after 66 hours the car here claims you have 6.4 kilowatt hour left so right now I have no idea when the car will shut down it is now four in the afternoon which means that we have reached the 69 hour mark the car has been empty at zero now for the longest time and earlier you saw that you had a little red bar it's gone now and also the funny thing is that the icicle thing is or the snow crystal is gone and uh, if you look here now we see that we have minus 1.43 percent state of charge and this one is also interesting we have a car estimates we have 2.4 kilowatt hour left so the, the wireless here were a little bit stuck once i got close to zero but supposedly once we had zero we had 3.6 kilowatt hour left that's what the car reports as the the buffer so i can actually show you if we go here but we have lots of values here uh there's a big big jungle of values here but uh, i can just try to find that um oh, which is again uh, i think i went past it oh you see you, uh, yeah just to give you guys an idea there are so many values from the canvas that has been interpreted here here, here, here. energy buffer this value here, energy buffer is supposed to be the value past zero percent yeah so 3.6 so that means that the car is hiding some unused i mean some capacity past zero that's just the way it has been programmed for but it seems like we have to stay maybe two more hours before the car shuts down then we are now at the 70 hour mark still going strong minus 2.7 percent 1.5 kilowatt hour left go 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 it is six now so it means 71 hour has passed and the car is about to die you can see the numbers here S minimum cell voltage is down to 2.7 and then we have supposedly only 0.2 or 0.3 kilowatt hour left Oof. i have not actually never driven a model 3 until it dies before so this is the first time i will experience what happens it happened but unable to drive battery charge level too low oh uh, i'm in neutral this is the shutdown sequence for uh, when you are in neutral because i'm not obviously in drive i can try to put the car in drive drive okay now we're just waiting with the music on some dramatic music waiting for the car to finally die oh i heard a little beep beep, beep. there was another warning Maybe there are several warnings here. Battery charge low. Vehicle shutting down. Pull over safely. Wait, wait when did that happen? 
vehicle shutting down was that before i think this one came now yeah there is no timestamp on it reach oh this this is it this is the this is the end boom you heard the contactor boom this is it this is the end this is what happens when the car totally shuts down the time of impact 1842 the car survived for 71 hours and 42 minutes before the heater finally shut down at this point you see here that the voltage is 12 it stopped charging the 12 volt right now screen doors charge port everything runs on the 12 volt so you don't want to discharge the 12 volt too much so yeah um, then there's some some electrical system power reduce there's you see there's some errors here yeah the obd also went off yeah we can see the obd shut down it shut down everything now car is going the car is dead ded -E it's over <laughs> okay so now comes so the, normally you would have to be rescued but for me we're gonna go outside and plug it in so you see where is very important the 12 volt system is still alive so you can still if you go, put the car in park you can still do this and you can still open the charge port then you go in outside charge port open we have to pull type 2 cable this is the uh, pull it pull it okay hang on. i need i need two hands or and then you plug it in and it will start charging wait for it wait for it wait for it green heater started again well i want to stop the heater for now heater started it's it's too big we have to restart this one okay let me restart and do some stuff here all right we are charging but it's only taking one kilowatt for some reason i don't know why and if you look here we just restarted scan my tesla it shows us as four point minus 4.58 percent there are some values missing here because we just restarted and the voltage in yeah 12 volt is now being charged again that's safe that's good you see 14.8 yeah wow okay now we wait then uh i'm not sure why it's going so slow here only one kilowatt charging all right we are juicing up now getting yeah putting in four kilowatt it was just just for the first five ten minutes it was charging a little bit slow and then it ramped up the speed so actually if we would go to the fast charger we could probably charge really fast but that doesn't matter now the car would just stay out here and charge overnight uh, but you know what was the purpose of this test well i wanted to show people and also i wanted to find out for myself how long can a tesla keep the heater running in winter remember it was winter outside okay maybe not the coldest winter but the weather conditions we had here was actually not the best for for heating up the cabin because we had constant rain and snow which kind of cools down the the glass and the car had to constantly work and i actually also noticed that the heat heater when you have it in automatic it will try to heat the front windscreen and keep it clear because that's how it's supposed to do it when you are driving but for stationary you don't care about it so actually if i would tweak the setting next time i would use normal uh, may maybe I would use manual setting and maybe go 20 degrees not 21 and then don't put put too much heat towards the windscreen just put heat on the foot and to your body instead and by doing that i'm pretty sure that we can save lots of energy and maybe camp for let's say 90 to 100 hour which is four days yeah that should be possible so um but this car doesn't have any eco mode or range mode on the on the um, uh, HVAC system like many other cars when you put the car in eco it will also be very stingy on the heater but this one didn't have it but uh, very interesting and also you know I also want to point out that EVs they are super efficient when they idle the car because think about this when you have fossil cars when they are parked in at the red light or uh, in congestion or just you know when they're just idling ready to go every minute counts for fossil cars because fossil cars will usually pull around point, uh, point 0.5 to point 0.7 liters per hour and then if you know that one liter of fuel contains about eight to ten 
kilowatt hour, it means that a fossil car is pulling somewhere between uh, 4 to 10 kilowatt for stationary, 4 to 10 kilowatt of energy when it's idling. Uh, but an EV, like we saw here, it's pulling only around 1 kilowatt. And if I tweaked it, it should be even lower than 1 kilowatt. So EV, when it's idling is way way more efficient because the energy that the EV needs for heating it's going straight to the heat pump and then becomes heat and there is no leftover heat but for fossil cars you, when you idle it you have lots of heat wasted in the engine so there's just heat going through the hood and then there's also lots of heat through the exhaust that the car doesn't scavenge, okay? They could scavenge it, they could design it and scavenge the heat, but they don't do it. I think the closest one that does this the most efficient way are actually plug-in hybrids because they will run the engine for a little bit and then stop and then use the leftover heat. But then even plug-in hybrids also have losses through the engine and the exhaust. So again, EVs, superb and I think actually if you ask people on the street how long do you think an EV can keep you warm in a full battery I think most people will answer one day maybe one to two days I think most people don't realize that a modern EV like a Model 3 can actually keep you warm for three or maybe four days so this is of course a corner case in case of let's say an accident, uh, bad weather, storm, uh, natural uh, disaster, or even fire in hot places, the car can keep you nice and warm or nice and cold for days, really. So you could say that for an EV, yes, uh, fossil cars, they have way better range than EVs today. But when it comes to idling, then EVs and fossil cars, they are maybe neck on neck. It depends what kind of car we're talking about. So. I think this is interesting, but this also this test also makes me wonder which other EVs can match or maybe even beat the Model 3. Model S and X, they don't have heat pump yet, so they can't beat it, or probably not. Maybe E-Nero, E-Soul, uh, those, those, those Korean cars are very efficient. They also have the driver-only mode, the eco mode, and uh, yeah, a fairly big battery. Uh, my guess is that maybe e-tron can do it, especially the one with the double glazed windows or Taycan, but can we actually go in some kind of camp mode with those cars? So I will see based on the feedback on this video, I might test another car to do this. Yeah, so what do you guys think, huh? Which car should I test? I can easily get an e-nero or e-soul, but as for Taycan or e-tron, not sure about that, but if enough people ask me, maybe I'll try it. So anyway, I think that's going to be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.